aggregates since aggregates occupies about 3 quarter of the volume of concrete it contributes significantly to the structural performance of concrete especially strength durability and volume stability aggregates are divided into either coarse aggregates or fine aggregates as per indian standard aggregate particle size between 75 micron and 4.75 mm comes under the fine aggregate category size larger than 4.75 mm is coarse aggregate sand taken from river beds and pits is typically used as fine aggregate before using it to make concrete it should be cleaned and rendered free from silt and clay and other impurities stone dust obtained from quarries is sometimes also used as a partial replacement for sand here i have a question for you to think upon why is the presence of clay and silt undesirable in the sand to make concrete well silt and clay materials are fine aggregate particles smaller than the 75 micron sieve size they tend to form a film on sand particles and prevents adhesion of cement to sand furthermore it delays the setting of cement increases drying shrinkage and increases the amount of water required for the mix thus reducing the ultimate strength of the concrete or mortar a significant presence of silt and clay in the sand may also cause unwanted hairline or sometimes significant cracks in the concrete gravel and crushed rock are usually used as coarse aggregate as it has been mentioned aggregates with size larger than 4.75 mm are coarse aggregate then the question comes what should be the maximum size of aggregate used in concrete The maximum size of coarse aggregate to be used in reinforced concrete work depends on the thickness of the structural member and the space available around the reinforcing bars. So accordingly one can specify the maximum size of aggregate. Here in the sketch shown for concrete with bars S is the clear spacing between bars and C is cover to reinforcement. As per provision laid by IS 456 2000 page number 14 clause number 5.3.3 page 14 clause 5.3.3 the nominal maximum size should not be greater than 1/4 of the minimum thickness of the member generally a maximum nominal size of 20 mm is found to be satisfactory in reinforced concrete structural elements and the case of heavily reinforced member it should be restricted to 5 mm less than the minimum clear spacing between bars of minimum cover to reinforcement whichever is smaller in such situations the maximum nominal size is frequently taken as 10 mm in situations where there is no restriction to the flow of concrete as in most plain concrete work there is no such restriction on the maximum aggregate size it is common to use aggregate up to 40 mm nominal size in the base concrete underneath foundations the code clause 5.3.3 of is 456 2000 even permits the use of plumbs which is nothing but aggregate of size above 160 mm the use of plumb in certain cases of mass concreting up to a maximum limit of 20% by volume of concrete now we will discuss about aggregate properties that influence concrete properties other than water cement ratio the physical and mineralogical properties of aggregate also determine the strength workability and durability of concrete these properties are shape and texture size gradation water absorption and free moisture specific gravity bulk unit weight reactivity bulking of sand and strength of aggregate 
Let us discuss each of these properties briefly. Shape and texture. The shape and texture of aggregate affects the properties of fresh concrete more than hardened concrete. Concrete is more workable when smooth and rounded aggregate is used instead of rough angular or elongated aggregate. Here we can see that this aggregate is round in shape, this aggregate is angular in shape, this aggregate is flaky and this aggregate is elongated. Most natural sands and gravel from river beds or sea shores are smooth and rounded and are excellent aggregates for making workable concrete. Crushed stone produces much more angular and elongated aggregates which have a higher surface to volume ratio, better bond characteristic but require more cement paste to produce a workable mixture. Not more than 10 to 15 percent of flaky and elongated aggregates should be used in concrete. The surface texture of aggregate can be either smooth or rough. A smooth surface can improve workability yet a rougher surface generates a stronger bond between the paste and the aggregate thereby creating a higher strength in resulting concrete. Size gradation. Particle size distribution of aggregate is termed as gradation. In order to determine the particle size distribution, sieve analysis is carried out. Result of sieve analysis are expressed in graphical form known as grading curve. So here we have the grading curve. To determine whether a particular grading is suitable or not, the sample grading curve shall be compared with standard grading curve specified by standard specification. Here the grading curve has been prescribed for a 20 mm size aggregate as per IS383-1970. You have the upper limit for the 20 mm grading and a lower limit for the 20 mm grading. Now whatever sample you are testing using sieve analysis, it should come within this. If grading requirements are not satisfied, concrete will have honeycombing, bleeding and will have less strength. Water absorption and free moisture. Aggregates have pores and can absorb water. When all the pores of aggregates are full of water, it is said to be saturated and surface dry. So here we can see this is the aggregate. Here this can be represented as a pore this pore is entirely occupied by water. So this will be termed as saturated and surface dry aggregate. If the aggregate is allowed to dry in air, some of the water from pores will evaporate. This is called air dry. So this aggregate is your air dry. So here you can see some of the water has been evaporated. Moisture in excess of saturated surface dry condition will make moist condition of the aggregate. So this is the moist aggregate. Here you can see we have excess water which is surrounding the surface of the aggregate. So this aggregate is in the moist condition. If the aggregates are oven dried all water will evaporate and is called bone dry. So here you can see if you dry the aggregates in oven, what will happen? Whatever water is present in pores that will get evaporated and this will become bone dry aggregate. Now what is absorption? Absorption is the moisture content when the aggregates are in saturated surface dry condition. Now here you see with reference to saturated and surface dry condition, you have absorption as the water content corresponding to saturated surface dry condition. Free moisture is the difference between moisture content of aggregate and absorption. So what is moisture content? Moisture content is weight of your aggregate minus weight of bone dry aggregate divided by weight of bone dry aggregate. So that is your moisture content. So same thing is applicable for moist aggregate. What is moisture content? That is the weight of the 
aggregate minus weight of aggregate in bone dry condition divided by weight of aggregate in bone dry condition. Whereas when I talk about absorption, here also we have the weight of aggregate in saturated surface dry condition minus weight of aggregate in bone dry condition divided by weight of aggregate in bone dry condition. So free moisture, it is nothing but it is the difference between moisture content minus absorption. Either it can be air dry or it can be moist aggregates minus saturated surface dry condition water content. So that is your free moisture. Now in mixed design of concrete, it is assumed that aggregates are saturated surface dry. Negative free moisture will make the aggregate to absorb water, whereas positive free moisture will release water in concrete mix. This two conditions significantly affects the quality of concrete at site. Hence, the knowledge of water absorption and free moisture is necessary. This will guide to decrease or increase the water content for a specific concrete mix at site. Specific gravity. Specific gravity values are used while designing concrete mix. Specific gravity is a mean to decide the suitability of the aggregate. Low specific gravity generally indicates porous, weak and absorptive materials whereas high specific gravity indicates material of good quality. Now specific gravity of major aggregates falls within the range of 2.6 to 2.9 bulk unit weight. Specific gravity refers to an individual particle. However, when aggregates is used for concrete, it contains voids. It is not possible to pack the aggregate so that it does not contain voids. Therefore, bulk density of aggregate is determined. Bulk density depends on the shape and particle size distribution. Using well-graded aggregate will yield less voids that is bulk density will be higher. The image shown here is deterioration of concrete due to alkali aggregate reaction. This is because of the reactive nature of aggregate attributed by the presence of active silica in aggregate which reacts with alkalis in cement to form alkali silica gel which swells and exerts internal pressure leading to expansion, cracking and disruption of cement paste. A possible practice to prevent disorders due to alkali silica reacted in concretes containing reactive aggregates is the use of chemical admixture lithium salt or more commonly mineral admixture such as fly ash, silica fume, GGBS that is ground granulated blast furnace slag or metacoline in concrete. Bulking of sand. The volume increase of fine aggregates due to presence of moisture content is known as bulking. Bulking increases with increase in moisture content up to a certain limit and beyond that the further increase in moisture content results in decrease in volume. This can be observed from the graph as shown. It should also be noted that finer the particle more will be the bulking. So here it can be seen as we are increasing the water content the volume is increasing but beyond certain point what happens the volume starts decreasing. Now question is what causes bulking of aggregate? The moisture present in aggregate forms a film around each particle. These films of moisture exert a force known as surface tension on each particle. Due to this surface tension each particle gets away from each other hence causing bulking of the volume. Unrealistic volume is shown by fine aggregate due to bulking. When concrete proportioning is to be performed, the sand bulking issue is a concern. If the effect of bulking is not studied properly, the concrete design will have an insufficient amount of sand resulting in harsh mix. Bulking of sand will affect the yield of concrete for a given cement content. Strength of aggregate. Strength of concrete depends on the strength of cement paste 
strength of the bulk of aggregate and the bond between them. If the strength of cement paste is satisfactory, good quality of concrete can be obtained, provided that the strength of aggregate and bond between aggregates and cement is satisfactory. However, if the strength of aggregate is satisfactory and the strength of paste and bond between them is low, a poor quality of concrete is obtained. Indirect methods are employed to determine the strength of aggregates. They are aggregate crushing value test and aggregate impact value test. The aggregate crushing value gives a relative measure of resistance of an aggregate to crushing under gradually applied compressive load. The aggregate crushing strength value is a useful factor to know the behavior of aggregates when subjected to a compressive load. Whereas the aggregate impact value gives a relative measure of the resistance of an aggregate to a sudden shock or impact. The impact value of an aggregate is sometimes used as an alternative to its crushing value. Aggregate crushing value and aggregate impact value less than 30% is recommended for concrete used for roads and pavement. For other structural works, aggregate crushing value should be less than 45% and aggregate impact value should be less than 50%.